Hamilton, hello everyone on a special edition and first interview of the Hogger History Podcast. On the show today, one of the most influential figures in American history, he was the youngest of the founding fathers, a journalist, an economist, a major author of the Federalist Papers, and, as if it wasn't enough, the first Secretary of the Treasury. Please join me in welcoming the famously re, re-famous Alexander Hamilton. Thank you for, for being here today. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. I know, I'm Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> you know, I'm just noticing, forgive me for mentioning this, but you don't seem to have an accent. It's 2016. Yeah. Right? Right. Next question. Okay, let's not waste time. With the musical that's all the rage What's right now. What's a musical? Uh, Hamilton, the, the musical, the book by Lynn manuel Miranda, inspired by the biography Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow? No, I mean, what's a musical? Um, I need to know to get in touch with my agent. <laughs> you aren't aware of musicals or Ron Chernow, but you also do have an agent. Who else has time to deal with publicity? Oh, good point. Uh, we have about 12 followers when I wrote this thing, and managing them is just, I mean, it's so tough. I thought this was about me. Okay, sorry, Mr. Hamilton, sorry. Uh, one of the early significant factors of your life was when you were orphaned, and you were abandoned by your father, and your mother passed away from yellow fever as well. Pleasant memory, thank you. Well, it did give you a couple of unique uh, courses or direction in your life. It forced you to start working at age 13 as a clerk until you were sent to live with wealthy benefactors. Thanks for covering for your term unique to reference my orphaning, as if it were a trip to get chowder on the Chesapeake Bay. But yes, I had to begin working young. There were definitely times when I would look and say, am I even supposed to be here today? I think you're confusing your time as a clerk with the 1994 indie film Clerks, but let's move on. Working at a young age and the instability of the time, you then began studying at King's College. We now know that as Columbia University. Go Lions! (laughs) There you started writing a lot of pro-revolutionary pamphlets. Why was that? Because we didn't have Twitter. Hammed. You've just been hammed. 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 Hammed? I I don't see that catching on. Hammed. (laughs) You are questioning my foresight? That's a mistake. Also, now that I think about it, I remember the paper being free. I don't want to lose money on this deal. Actually, there was a lot of writing back and forth in popular presses, and I wrote fervently and with great gusto. When the first shots of Lexington and Concord were fired, I put down my papers and helped Washington escape battle, and was a major advisor to him. I became a captain shortly therein, passed the bar, and became a member of the Continental Convention, all before the end of the Revolutionary War. That's really impressive. Some of those early writings and refutations, they were done anonymously. Was there a reason for that? I often forgot to put my name on the paper. Some of your students might be able to relate. Well, from time to time. Kind of like this interview. Hammed again. (laughs) Touche. Two times. Ham, ham. You found yourself in the minority many times in the Congress. Early on, you were one of the strongest believers in a powerful central government. You worked diligently to get your ideas incorporated into the Constitution as one of the 55 delegates that was involved. It was a trial of my patience. I wrote in 1780 to a letter to a friend, The Confederation itself is defective and requires to be altered. It is neither fit for war nor peace. I worked to focus on correcting and decentralizing the nature of the Continental Congress, particularly its dependence on the states for voluntary financial support. Under the Articles of Confederation, Congress had no power to collect taxes or to demand money from the states. We couldn't function. This lack of stable source of funding made it difficult for the army to both obtain provisions or pay for its soldiers. I wrote 51 of the 80 Federalist Papers to clear the states the benefits of our side. When Washington became president, he made me secretary of the treasury. How could you have strong states, though, if you were making the federal authority so powerful? Good point. I argued with Madison and John Jay supporting me that federal government should assume all state debts that help states financially regulate and begin to govern themselves more effectively. With national policies designed to run programs and manage debt as a strong central unit. Pretty ahead of its time, sounds like to me. Kind of like this. This interview, right? Hammed. Okay, I, I kind of like it now. Huzzah! So, with that figured, I called for a national bank and the minting of gold-based coinage. I served my term with the treasury, then returned to law. I needed to make more money to support my family. Amazing to think at the time it wasn't like a money-making entrepreneurial endeavor to be part of, you know, making the country great. But Washington passed away, 1799. He was one of your closest friends. I must figure that he had to be your most significant mentor. He opened the door to my ability to make an impact on the world. When he passed, I felt an absence. He was taciturn. That must be a vocabulary word. (laughs) 
Ham. Now who's hamming? <laughs> Hammed. While I was more brash and outspoken, we were like that, Dante and Randall, of the political quick stop, in a letter to Elias, I don't know. Let's say Bowdenau. <laughs> Bowdenau? Yeah. In a letter to Elias Bowdenau after the Battle of Mammoth, in June 1778, I wrote, His coolness and firmness were admirable. He directed the whole with the skill of a master workman. Oh, sincere and moving words. Also, you really seem to have enjoyed that film. What's a film? <sighs> okay, well, when Adams ran against Jefferson in 1800, you took a strong stance for Thomas Jefferson to help boost him over Aaron Burr. You were accused of having a despicable opinion, quote-unquote. Letters back and forth escalated, and in 1804, you scheduled a duel right above the Hudson Bay. You set aside all of your affairs, and you met with Burr. Sounds like a good plot for a theatrical production. Okay, so you know what theatrical production is? Anyways. Damn. You famously shot your pistol into the air, and in some presumed that you were gesturing to resist, but you did not fire at Burr. You refused to shoot him. He failed to meet your grace. He took aim, fired at you, mortally wounding one of the most significant contributors to the foundation of America. You passed away the next day, and your own son, actually three years earlier, also passed away in a duel. Ironically, Burr removing me from the political scene actually ended his own career completely in politics. He fled and became a wanted man after that. Huh. And you are now being remembered in much greater detail than ever before. You were certainly a visionary and had a huge impact on the world. What's it feel like to be Alexander Hamilton today? Pretty good. Damn. Well, with that said, uh, we appreciate you taking the time to be here today, and I know uh, my students and students around the world are going to be eager to hear from you, and just glad we could get together and make this thing happen. I know you had lots of places to be today, and I'm glad you could take a few minutes out for the Hogger History Podcast. No problem. Anytime. All right. Well, thanks so much for being with us today. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter at Hogger History. You can also email your episode suggestions to hoggerhistorypod at gmail.com or hoggerhistory at gmail.com. And we will be back with you shortly with an episode interviewing the famous flight heiress and the heiress of flight. And I don't think either of those two combinations work. We're going to be interviewing Amer Amelia Earhart. So stay with us on the Hogger History Podcast. Thanks for joining us. And uh, thanks again, Alexander Hamilton. Happy to be here. Damn. Damn. You've just been hammed.